Hey friends. Hello, hello. Hi, welcome. Okay, so I really wanted to play some music and I got, I have like a record player that we bought um, a couple weeks ago and um, it doesn't want to play. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it's like, I don't know. It, there's a lot of toggling options and so I need to just have my husband show me how to like work it or whatever. Good morning. Hello. Okay. So we aren't going to be listening to Harry Styles this morning, unfortunately. Um, good morning. Good morning. Hey, how's everybody? Um, but that's okay. So instead, <laughs> let's just do what we've been doing. Um, let's go ahead and find our journal um, page and let's go ahead and write the date at the top and uh, let's empty our brains first. So just like I've said in the past, uh, the best thing to do is to kind of like get whatever you're feeling onto the page before you start gratitude journaling. Um, and today's the 21st. And so we'll go ahead and do that for a couple of minutes, just kind of um, jot whatever down is like coming up. So uh, thanks for the likes. Um, so go ahead and start that and I'll be silent for a minute or two. It's going to bug me that like I tried doing that and I should have maybe tried a little bit harder last night while my husband was home. But it is what it is. Um, okay, so maybe that's what I'll write down. I'm annoyed that my record player doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, I am. And I'm just gonna write super bummed a few times. <laughs> super bummed, super bummed. I feel like sometimes just like writing the same sentiment that you're feeling like strongly, like will help to just like get it out. So, all right. And I didn't want to wake up when I woke up this morning. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes people are like, well, just start waking up early and then eventually it'll get easier. And then when you do, you're like, okay, I did just wake up early yesterday and it felt good. But like the very next day I felt like shit. <laughs> and I don't know why, like I drank enough water. I don't drink, I haven't, I actually haven't drank in like over three years. Like, there shouldn't be, like, a reason why I'm waking up, like, crap, you know? But, like, that's what happens. It's probably because I'm tossing and turning somehow in my sleep and I don't realize it. I'm not getting enough sleep. And then when 5 a.m. comes, it's like my body is screaming at me, like, do not wake up. Like, you need more sleep. But, like, I have to for whatever reason. So, um, it is what it is sometimes, you know? Okay. So now that we've gotten that out onto the paper, all of our annoyances, like I'm even awake right now. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and write down one, two, three. And what I mean by that is like a little column, one, two, three. And then each one you'll write down, um, I'm grateful for, you know, and you don't even have to write I'm grateful for, you can just write the thing. So, now that our grievances out of the way, let's see what we're like thankful for. Um, number two is always going to be coffee. Like, um, I think my number one, and this is going to sound odd, but it's just what I'm feeling today. <laughs> um, I have a deep obsession. You may not know this, um, for 90 day fiance. <laughs> 
So that's my number one. I love all things 90 Day Fiance. Every single spinoff show, everything. Like I could literally watch that every single day. Like, it's so interesting to me. So last night it wasn't like I had, I had like been caught up and I was bummed. So I was like, okay, if, <laughs> if I have no 90 Day Fiance to watch, what is life? <laughs> And the, the reality of it is just kind of like, you know, my kids watch a lot of TV. So anytime I am able to watch TV, it's like a backlog of something. And so just to kind of give you perspective there, like there's not that much there is. And I like, I, the only subscription I have for like TV stuff is like Netflix and Discovery Plus, <laughs> which has like 90 Day Fiance, like all tied in. Oh, and Disney Plus, of course. But like, those are it. Like I canceled all my other ones because I just didn't watch them. And so, you know, just as perspective goes. Um, and then last, uh, community. I'm grateful for all of you who watch me and are here for me and, um, appreciate, you know, anything that I'm doing to kind of help your, make your life a little bit better. Okay. All right, friends, let's go ahead and find a little bit of meditation and we're just going to meditate for like one single minute today so find a comfortable seat maybe have your hands um, face down for some grounding you can have face up for um, like receiving the gifts of the universe so however you'd like and then maybe lift up your chest roll your shoulders up down and back and then maybe even like kind of move your neck so that everything is in line so once you find a seat that feels good, go ahead and close your eyes. Feel into your breath. Inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Another deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. And then last time on your own. Begin to seal the lips and breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Finding an ujjayi breath. So this is a count of four, five, or six. And we inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And maybe you need a five count. Maybe you need a six count. So you might explore or you might go right to the breath. That feels good. So we'll do this for one whole minute. On that next exhale, just come back to center. Bring your hands to your heart center. Tuck your chin. Thank yourself for showing up today. And then whenever you're ready, go ahead and bring your hands back down. Maybe open your eyes. Um, and I just want to remind you, like, if you had lots and lots of intrusive thoughts or just thoughts in general, um, totally normal because my thoughts happened to be the ones that I had put down on my paper thinking I could get the thoughts out of my brain. And the entire time I'm thinking about this damn record player that's not working and it's annoying me. So even though like I wrote it down, you would think like, oh, well, she said if I write it down, it'll be out of my brain. Not the case at all. I was like hyper fixating. It just is what it is sometimes. Like uh, your brain wants to do things a certain way. And so it takes that extra effort to be like, Okay, I get it. You're really upset about this. <laughs> you need to pause and stop it. <laughs> 
Um, and I just want to like tell you that it's normal. Um, let's go ahead and kind of uh, scoot our bolster back. I think today um, I want to practice from like hands and knees from, for a bit. So if you want to just go ahead and find a comfortable spot in your home, you can um, have something close by like a bolster. So this is my bolster just to give you just like a thick, big old padded pillow type of looking thing. Um, but I just thought we could do a little bit of um, shoulder work. My shoulders have been bothering me. And so I wanna do some thread the needle. So um, plant your hands down on the mat and then like grip with your fingertips. So <sighs> find whatever feels good, neutral. So shoulders over wrists, knees underneath hips, inhale. Find that cow shape, maybe look up. Exhale, round the back, push into the hands. So a lot of times we're focused on how the back looks. Instead, focus on how the shoulders feel. So push into the hands, relax your neck. Inhale, look up. And really try to stick out the booty to get that low back really accentuated. You could even wiggle the bum. Exhale, find that cat. Maybe even find some just gentle swaying or organic movement as you kind of roll through this. So inhale for your cow. Exhale for cat. And then just kind of maybe find a barrel roll or you can stay static too. You can just kind of roll through cat cows. But like this kind of movement is like so good for your back body front body it just keeps the spine in line there's like a bunch of geese that are flying over my house and it sounds like a dog dying <laughs> I'm like what is that noise I don't know if you can hear it oh, my shoulders are bugging me so I'm really doing cat a few times so I'm not like as focused on my cows going slow and I think that's some of the stuff with yoga we kind of rush through poses and we forget to just kind of feel our bodies so we're just doing cat cows and then thread the needle those are pretty much the two moves we're doing today so go slow feel into the body and be here for as long as you like it it might just feel good to just kind of bring your hands out in front set your forearms down relax your head Find like a little gentle child's pose. Um, if that doesn't feel good, you could also uh, lift up your chest and come into like a hero's pose or even just find a kneeling position, hands out to the side. So lots of options if you want to kind of switch it up a little. And sometimes we even we get we start to get bored right we start to like do a pose and we're like how long is she gonna be here for as long as it takes <laughs> like some we don't give ourselves enough um, time sometimes you know so I'm just kind of moving my hips back and forth and as I like move my hip to the left from my knee all the way to my hip I'm like whoo so instead of like a pigeon which is a deep hip opener I'm getting the same type of stretch from just being on my knees. And that's the thing, like when you can kind of cue into your body, you realize like you don't need to put a thousand percent effort into a practice. You need to put more effort into the mindfulness of how it feels in your body. And more specifically, asana practice, so like a movement practice, because I think people forget like yoga is more than just moving your body. It's about conscious breathing. It's about um, being a good human. <laughs> like there are philosophies in yoga, like like do no harm and um, like being a part of your you know community and. Um, there's just so many different things. So, uh, of course my brain, it's early, so I'm not like 
able to just spitball them right this second. My hip is just really wanting to like stretch out. So I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm like my, it's hard to tell in this like video, but I'm like just trying to like settle in and just kind of like rock back and forth gently and just allow myself to just like open up. And if you're like, this is boring, like good. <laughs> it should feel boring because you're like, you're expecting this practice to like get into some deep, crazy moves. That's not what my practices have ever been about. It's always been about feel good in your body, allow yourself to explore and um, go slow. And so if you're here and you're like, yes, that's my vibe. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so I'm just kind of moving my hip back and forth. I'm feeling deeply from the knee all the way to that outer hip, really allowing myself to just feel that. <sighs> I wanted to work on my shoulders and then I ended up working on my hips and that's like the beauty of yoga. You just never know where you're gonna go. Plant one of the hands in the middle of the mat, lift up the chest, lift up your hand. And if you don't wanna go here, if you wanna stay working on that cat cow, go for it. I take my knees a little bit wider even open up the chest and then exhale. I take that hand and I thread the needle, so to speak. So put it behind the one that's out in front and then set my shoulder down. I like to kind of plant my forearm here and I like to push into the forearm to kind of help stretch out the shoulder. Maybe my forehead, maybe my whole cheek, everything kind of comes down to the mat. Take some deep breaths here. I think another interesting thing is like, what comes up as you kind of sit in the pose, those feelings are so true and valid and like, right as soon as we feel discomfort, a lot, oftentimes we immediately take ourselves out of the situation instead of like leaning into it or backing off enough to where we can like sustain. I think that's another part of like yoga, um, practice is like you can be here for as long as you need to like my shoulder has been bugging me so I need to like really take the time to feel into this so I'm just going to kind of rock back and forth I'm not looking at the camera so I'm like this is weird to me so I'm just kind of like trying to stretch out my neck too a little bit here And then I'm going to push back, bring my chin kind of by my shoulder. I think a lot of times when we're in poses, we're thinking like, how do they need to look? And we're not focused on how they need to feel. Settle in. On that next exhale, let's plant that right hand down and then lift up slowly, slowly, slowly. We've just been down for a minute. And then open up again. Oh, and then that left hand comes down and maybe you just kind of stretch it out. You can kind of move back and forth. My right shoulder just popped. Oh, my shoulders have been bugging me. Oh, I've said that a few times now. Go ahead and come back onto the heels or maybe find a kneeling posture and just kind of feel into that left shoulder. All right, let's do the other side now. Go ahead and bring both hands back down. Left hand comes to the middle. So let me uh, face you a little bit more. Right hand comes up, opening up the chest, maybe looking up, getting a really nice stretch in this front body and maybe even holding it. And then when we're ready, we thread the needle. So it comes behind this hand, reaches, and we can just kind of hold it here for a second and then bend that elbow. And maybe we like lean back onto our like knees to give ourselves some leverage. Take the hair out of our mouth. Ugh. <laughs> Turn my hand. This is important because it gives you leverage. And then like set the other hand down and then set your shoulder down. This is a weird angle. <laughs> and then my forehead down. So I'm feeling a deep stretch here. Oh, oh this is what I needed. Uh, 
And then oftentimes yoga teachers will say like, bring your hand out in front. That means like this. And it gives you a different leverage, but honestly like forearm down is just as good. And you can see how I'm kind of like moving my chin closer to my shoulder and then further you can kind of stretch out your neck. Just notice how you're feeling and go really slow because this is your neck, you know what I mean? <laughs> so go slow and it kind of feels like, okay, this feels good. Feels like I'm doing something, right? <sighs> Take a deep breath. And that's the thing too, like when you notice that you're you're thinking, oh, I gotta get up. Oh my gosh, I can't stand this pose any longer. It's too much, it's too much. And your teeth are starting to grit. It's usually because you've gone too far. You've gone past your edge. Um, you're not really thinking into your body. You're trying to be like performative, like check your ego, back off, take a deep breath, settle into it again. And then really focusing on the breath brings it into a perspective where you're like, okay, I can be here all day, right? But we don't have the time for that. So let's plant that left hand and slowly, slowly, slowly lift up. Oh gosh, my right shoulder is worse than my left. Maybe even kind of shake it out and then open up. Oh. And then, oh, did you hear that pop? <laughs> totally, my shoulders are bugging me. And then we just come back to that kneeling posture. Shake it out, oh, lifting up the chest. Just check on our shoulders. We could even bring our elbows forward to feel. And then up, out to the sides. We're just finding some rotation. I can feel the glong, glong, glong. And then if it feels good, you can bring your hands to that low back, lift up the chest. Ugh. You could even grab your hands behind you and then bring your uh, fists down, just depending on how tight your shoulders are. Ugh. Of course, you can just keep your hands here too. So whatever feels good. Ugh. And then just shake it out. Okay, that is what I needed today. So yeah, have you done um, any videos about hip stretches? My left one is way less flexible than the right. Um, yes, <laughs> I have done so many. I, recently, um, if you check out my YouTube channel, I have, um, I have hair in my mouth right now. <laughs> um, I have dozens of hip opening videos. In fact, I did a, an entire 30 day series called um, 30 Days to Happy Hips and it's completely free and it's on YouTube and all of the practices are like 10 to 30 minutes. And I also show um, each move um, from a chair, from blocks and I think the ground or standing. I can't remember exactly because it was like two years ago, but still one of my um, most played playlists. I also have a 90 day yoga challenge I did like two years ago and also a really, really popular playlist, completely free. It's 90 days. Every single day I show you a routine. I show it from a chair. I show it from uh, blocks, standing with blocks, and then I show it, or even standing with a chair, and then from the ground. And so you can kind of choose the level and effort that you want to put into it. Um, in a way that like feels good. And if you're like, I wanna do the groundwork, I feel like it's really good for people to start from a chair no matter what, so that they can feel um, the, their body in a different way. Because a lot of times um, they don't realize like chair work is just as difficult as floor work. <laughs> You have to put the mindset behind it to make it difficult. You can't just be like, oh, chair, chair work is for old people and people who are injured. I'm not injured, I'm not old. That's a really like egocentric way of thinking. Instead, think of it like chair work is the base. It, it gives you an understanding of how a pose should feel. And then when you get to the floor work, you know how it feels and you can deepen the practice when you're ready. So it's 
it all goes together. That was brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for this. Made me stop what I was doing and joined in. Yay! I did a lot of that from chair or against the table because my knees hurt. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, the thing is, is that that was like definitely, it was all on my knees this morning. And that's just kind of what I was feeling into. Um, a couple days yesterday, I think we just did seated. And then day before, I think we did standing. And so that's the thing. Like, I personally don't struggle with like knee problems, but I am conscious and aware that there are people who have that issue. And so you just happened to catch me on a day where I was like, knee focused <laughs> we were doing a lot of knee work today so i apologize um but uh a lot of my other work is very focused on like standing postures only or um, being seated in a chair so like your knees aren't going to be affected so if you like how i teach and you're like but that practice didn't work for me maybe go and check out my other videos like i said youtube is a thing um and you can go and like enjoy those videos. I think most of the ones I'm posting now are only like 10 minutes long. Um, but if you kind of like look through my yoga flow videos, you'll see like 20, 30 minute flows. Um, I like that you mentioned pushing too hard is performative and not helpful. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I don't think about that and push too hard, I think. Um, it's okay. Still great. And doing something is better than nothing. It's so true. And I think even if you sat here and paste your breath and just inhale deeply and exhale, that is doing something. Like I think people um, don't value breathing slowly as something. And so um, like give yourself time to uh, understand that it, you don't have to look a certain way, you know? You don't even have to move your body, but just like breathing is important. Um, and yeah, like the pushing too hard thing. Um, I have been there, I have been in that mode of like I must err like it really is like this kind of tension in your body when you start to kind of go try to go deeper and um it's it's never felt good at the end of practice for me and so for me my whole practice and way of doing things now is like what does your body want to do like today is a different day than yesterday your body is going to feel different I'm on my period right now the last thing I want to do is sun salutations, right? So like, listen, <laughs> respond. And I think that's part of the problem is that people are like, well, if I do a really hard workout while I'm on my period, then um, that, that'll help the cramping go away. No, <laughs> that will make it worse. Like people don't realize like the things that are, they're doing to their body is just making everything worse. <laughs> And like, but my body loves it. No, it doesn't. It is screaming, literally screaming at you. <laughs> and yet you push harder and harder. Like, that's kind of where <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to like make fun of those people that sounded harsh, but I, I have been there and that's, I'm like more making fun of myself. Like I have been there. I have been in that mindset of like, let's it doesn't matter if it's raining outside i still need to run five miles today like what like i got sick right after like think tiffany hi new plus size yoga teacher here just wanted to say thanks for sharing and shedding light you're welcome on some new barriers people face oh i'm so glad that you commented you're welcome little steps to get to your goal yes um lol <laughs> i feel like people um People know, don't even understand what like, um, they, they don't even understand what their body is capable of in a way that's like, this is a weird thing to kind of like comprehend, but, um, they don't know how to feel their body and they don't want to, and it is hard for them. And so that is what my goal is, is to just like have you feel something. And once you can teach somebody how to do that, I think that's where like real yoga like starts to take place because if you are just doing the moves and you're just like, I can do a full bird of paradise. My hips go up all the way to the sky. Those poses aren't like, 
those poses, not only are they very advanced and there's another yoga teacher here that like says it so much better and her name is also Crow. So um, I think it's Alexandria Crow and she shows like your body doesn't always like fit the mold for the yoga asana. And so, and I just mean movement or pose. Um, so like your body might not even be able to do that because like your hips don't have the flexibility or your knee length to your hip length and your arm length to this isn't going to be able to wrap around and do this. Like it's just not, you never will be able to get there. <laughs> and if you do, you will injure yourself. And like, I think that's the thing is people are so focused on this end result. Oh, I got it your body is screaming at you and you're not listening. You don't got it. <laughs> the got it is in the listening. And that's the hardest thing I think um, for like westernized yoga is they're not used to listening and pausing and feeling something. And like, when was the last time you went to a yoga class and they had you just do like cat cows the entire time? Never because most yoga teachers are gonna like try to give you a workout, which is great. Like we all need it at times, um, but we even need pause and stillness more. And yet like we don't always get that. Um, we very rarely get that. And so I hope it kind of like sheds a little bit of light onto it. I love that make room for our bodies. Yeah, exactly. Um, it can be so hard to listen to my body. It's hard. And that's like, it's, it's interesting. Cause people are like, yoga is hard. Yoga is hard for ways you don't even realize. Like yoga is hard, like in a mental way, because we're so like, right. We're so like, gotta get, gotta get this done. Gotta get this done. And like yoga forces us to slow down and do things that we're like, Oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> and then we're like, wait, Actually, it's not that bad, <laughs> but like, that's the lesson, right? There's um, a book called like how yoga works and it's like 500 pages. And by the end of it, I was bawling and like, it's so real because the first half of it was just practice. It was like, this is the practice and you can't learn the lesson without the practice. <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's a lot deeper than going to a workout class. It's a lot deeper than that. And that's what people have like kind of transitioned it into. Um if you do the work every single day and understand the lessons, um then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh my gosh, what was I doing?" You know. The whole point is to learning to pay attention. Yes. Yes, or child pose half the time. And that's the thing. Like child's pose isn't a bad thing. And I talk about child's pose in um, like, uh, you can't do this performative pose, so you should do child's pose instead. Um, child's pose isn't a bad thing, but the way that people think about child's pose is the bad thing. And so it's hard to make a relatable TikTok about this um, because people, re if you are in a plus size body, then you've probably experienced it. So that's why whenever I talk about child's pose on a TikTok, it's not usually like, oh, this is like actually good because I needed to slow down. It's usually cause like you aren't gonna feel something and I won't, this is, this sounds harsh, but like I won't get the same response if I'm like, oh, listen to your body. like on a TikTok because people don't want to. <laughs> they want to feel angry. <laughs> and so I'll, I've been like kind of practicing with that <laughs> content strategy. Um, eventually I can like get back into like some other stuff, but like content and like that kind of playing with the algorithm. She is a fickle, fickle one. <laughs> you can only do so much, right? Um, this is the practice. Yep, get that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the book Yoga for Everybody is really amazing too. Is that the one um, Jessamyn Stanley wrote? Yoga for Everybody. I think I have that book. I could probably go find it somewhere. Maybe I'll bring it with me. 
Um, I have a bunch of yoga books. <laughs> Any yoga teacher should have like quite a collection, quite a library of like yoga books. Um, I think when I went through my yoga teacher training, they asked us to purchase like 12 books. Um, I purchased them all happily and um, went through and I read like I think all the one that I struggled with the most and I should probably try reading it again and I would have a completely different perspective on it this time around would be the book Bhagavad Gita um, and I, when I was reading it I felt so much religious trauma <laughs> because essentially that's what it is it's like the Bible for yoga but I felt so much religious trauma that um, it didn't feel good to me and then Another weird thing that happened in my yoga teacher training was that um, the teachers that were teaching me, right, the main teachers had hired like a secondary teacher to teach like um, the body, but the bones, the all the different things. And, and like, honestly, when I got to that part, I checked out because one of the first things that second teacher came in and said was, um, you know that we all came from fish, right? And it bothered me so much. And then I had all this religious trauma from like this. I was like, this is awful. But you know, yoga really um, forces you to like think about those things. Like, okay, where did we come from? <laughs> you know, this is the part. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to that and, and you're like, oh, I believe this way. I believe that way. Great. Like, I'm not like debating that at all. I'm just saying when he said that, it was like, I don't like you. <laughs> it bothered me so much. I thought about it for days. Um, and then it also like challenged like what my true like beliefs were. And I think that's the interesting thing about yoga too. It like consciously conscious awareness is you you can't just achieve that from like one practice of yoga you know um you can't i got this new ring and it's like all of a sudden hurting my finger so i'm gonna take it off for a second <sighs> i feel like i'm getting too deep <laughs> when it comes to this stuff um I just remember vividly like when I went through my yoga teacher training like that was an instance that I just was like I don't like this like it just bothered me a lot so um but I appreciate you all being here I didn't mean to get on that tangent <laughs> good morning from Newfoundland awesome uh do you have Newfoundland dogs <laughs> um I lied it's yoga for everyone by Diane Bondi okay Diane Bondi, love her, right? Lots of mods for all types of bodies. Yes, I follow an account called Friendish and um, was introduced to Diane Bondi through that account. Um, not to say that I know her in person or anything, but um, Diane Bondi, Amber Carnes, Jessamine Stanley, Friendish, um, or Shannon, her name is Shannon. There's so many amazing like yoga plus size body accounts that you should follow. Not all of them are like present here on TikTok, but they do have quite a big following on Instagram for sure. Love your shirt. Thin, young, old, heavy, disabled, really great. Yeah, um, I'm obsessed. My husband surprised us uh, or surprised me with it yesterday. Um, he and I both wear like the same size t-shirt and so he'll buy like two shirts that are like the same. But like a little bit different so we both can kind of like wear both i think he got the baseball one we just haven't received it in the mail yet but yeah i think he got it from hot topic because i saw like the tag i don't but i have a fluffy jack russell and she has a friend who's a newfoundland oh i love that um like I, you probably don't know this but um i worked at a pet store for uh, close to 20 years a big one that's what I did before I became a yoga teacher and so um and I used to breed dogs uh and um I used to do a lot of things with dogs and training it was very very focused so we went all over the country uh showing them working them we did a lot of things with our dogs and so um we would occasionally see Newfoundland so they're they're a beautiful breed uh, my baseball one is 
is in the mall too. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't know why they only sent one. We ordered two. Whatever, I get to wear it today. <laughs> but, um, okay, I think my morning routine is done. I need to film some content. <laughs> So I will see you uh, tomorrow, 6 a.m. I want to remind you, my Costa Rica trip has a few more spots available. Um, we are up to 11 uh, people who are coming on the trip. And so it's just exciting to kind of like see everything. And I was about to book my flight yesterday and I realized I had to make a decision. I had to decide, am I going to um, fly... <laughs> from an airport that's 10 minutes away from me but I would have like two connecting flights so I'd have two stops two layovers and I would be in the air three additional hours because of the layovers or do I drive three hours and have um all of a sudden I'm like seeing ants on the ground and <laughs> pincher bugs I need to call my pest guy um or do I uh, drive three hours and have zero layovers and a direct flight? And I'm thinking a direct flight. <laughs> um, thank you for today. You are so welcome. I appreciate you. So, um, all right, friends. I'll see you later. Check out the links in my bio and um, you know subscribe to my email list. You can do that by like signing up for that 60 minute yoga class and it's free you just put in your email and then every morning i send out an email reminder like hey i'm going live at 6 a.m today pacific standard time um and then we do a little bit of journaling meditation and then some movement so um, i'm glad you enjoyed it you have a wonderful day too and i'll see you tomorrow bye